Hello, my name is Brian Devers and I'm the Director of Media and Communications here at Benedictine High School in Class of 2008. And I'm Brian Lacey, Class of 2012, Alumni Director. And welcome back to Benedictine. As you all know, COVID-19 has changed things significantly for our society. Benedictine has enacted a responsible restart plan so that we can continue in-person learning safely. And in order for us to coexist safely, we all have to follow some certain ground rules. First, let's agree on a philosophy. We have all heard many conflicting facts and stories about the dangers of COVID-19. But is it any more or less dangerous than riding in a car? Thousands of people are injured every year riding in a car. In fact, in 2019, 38,800 people died from car accidents and 4.4 million were injured seriously enough to require hospital attention. But does that stop us from riding in cars every day? Think about all the precautions we take while driving. We're required to wear seat belts, we have stop signs, traffic lights, speed limits, and painted lines for people to know where to be. These precautions, these laws, are not an infringement on your freedom and liberty, but rather they allow us to use motor vehicles more safely while minimizing risk. Our philosophy then is to minimize risk while still trying to live our lives and grow. In the same way we wear seatbelts in the car, we will wear masks in the classroom. In the same way we maintain distance on the road, we will maintain social distance whenever possible. Will we be perfect? No. But as a community, as a brotherhood, it's our duty to minimize risk, to protect ourselves, and to protect each other as men of Benedictine. Let's lay out our at-school strategies. Step one begins before you arrive at school. Every morning you should ask yourself, am I experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19? Cough or sore throat, shortness of breath, loss of taste or smell, extreme fatigue, and no, not the I'm just too tired to go to school fatigue. The main thing we all need to do is to check our temperature at home. If you have a temperature at 100.3 or higher, you need to stay home. We're gonna need the cooperation of the entire community of parents, students, and staff to make this work. That means honestly and diligently checking your temperature at home every day before coming to school. We all need to be more diligent about hand washing and hand sanitization. Use the hand sanitizing stations in between classes and make it a point to wash your hands more often. We are all going to have increased responsibilities when it comes to maintaining the cleanliness of the spaces around us. The maintenance staff has new nightly cleaning protocols, but we need to do our part throughout the day. Be prepared to be asked to sanitize your desk as the period begins. Just like we take pride in everything else we do, take pride in the spaces around you. Disinfecting your desk might prevent a student or a teacher from getting coronavirus. And remember, our philosophy is to minimize risk. Let's talk about face masks. What do we know? Public health guidelines are clear that face coverings are an essential component to mitigating the transmission of COVID-19. Now, are masks a perfect, impenetrable barrier? No. That's why we need to combine face coverings with social distance. This year, classrooms will be set up to help maintain a distance of six feet or more from each other. It is important to maintain this distance whenever possible. We won't be able to do this 100% of the time, but remember, since we can eliminate risk, our philosophy is to minimize risk. Maintaining social distance in the classroom allows us to be here together. But let's acknowledge this, it won't be easy. Do we wanna shake hands or high five? Of course. If your teammate hits a buzzer beater, we mob them. If you see your friend in the hallway, you jump on them. If you wanna have a conversation, you lean in close. These are our natural instincts. In this time of coronavirus, until we have a treatment or a cure, we are going to have to fight our instincts to be physically close to one another. Maintaining constant vigilance will not be easy, but we owe it to our community to try. 
It might mean the difference between coronavirus being spread between two or three people to being spread between 30 to 50 people or more. It's okay to acknowledge that we don't like masks. All of this goes against our natural behavior, but we can't allow the things that we don't like to affect our behavior in a way that makes our community unsafe. And when we do make mistakes, we need to learn from them. Every day we should be getting better at this. This is a lot of added responsibility, but part of becoming a man is added responsibility. Men and women throughout history have had to maintain standards and be vigilant or fall to circumstances. We may fail in this, but it is our duty to minimize risk and to stop the spread of COVID-19. This is a team effort, so if a student or a teacher asks you to put on your mask, you need to listen to them. If somebody says you need to maintain your distance, you need to check your behavior and do so. All of this pressure on top of your schoolwork and activities will take a toll on all of us. It's important not only to take care of your physical health, but also your mental health. Our counseling department is a great place to find this help. Even if you feel you don't need the help at this time, you can feel comfortable going and introducing yourself to the counseling department. Along with the spiritual support you receive in your theology classes, the social and emotional support you'll get from the counseling department will be important to maintaining your overall health. Let's go over the protocol for arriving at school. Doors open for students at 7 a.m. If you arrive before 7.45 a.m., you will go to the gym. When you are in the gym, you will maintain social distance. Markers will be in place to help you know how far to be apart. If you arrive after 7.45 a.m., you will go straight to your first period class. Whether coming from the gym or arriving after 7.45, you enter the door under the Brother Ted Spirit Bridge. For those of you who take a bus to school, you will use hand sanitizer when boarding, wear your mask, and be limited to one student per seat unless you are sitting next to a member of the same household. For your safety, the bus seats and high-touch areas have been sanitized between each route. If you happen to arrive late for school, you will report immediately to room 103 and check in with Mr. DeGeronimo. This year, all tardies and readmits will come out of room 103 and not the main office. Normally, your locker is somewhere that you can return to often throughout the day. This year, that's not the case. We won't be using lockers. Most of your textbooks are electronic, and we ask that you carry the items you need with you throughout the day. Let's talk stairwells. Pay attention because this will probably be confusing. There will be two up-only stairwells and two down-only stairwells. The north stairwell by the band room and closest to the abbey will be up-only. The stairwell towards the front of the school, towards Martin Luther King Drive and closest to the Abbey driveway, will be down only. The other front stairwell, or the south front stairwell by the conference room and the admissions office, will be up only. And the south underpass stairwell by the Brother Ched Spirit Bridge will be down only. This hallway by the business office will only have traffic going this way, towards Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. That means if you're coming from the cafeteria and you want to go to the science wing, you're going to want to go up these stairs and go down the hallway past the math and computer classrooms to cross the Brother Ted Spirit Bridge. Once you're in the science wing, to exit, you have to go down the stairs by the gym, exit the door there, and come back in the door under the Brother Ted Spirit Bridge. There will be arrows on the ground to help you with the traffic patterns. We've increased the time between each class to five minutes this year, but because of social distancing and the new traffic patterns, you will not have time to waste. So pay attention to the arrows on the floor and the stairwells you're in so you can get to your next class. Traditionally, eating in the cafeteria is a time of relaxation and socialization. It still can be that way to some degree, but in order to remain safe, please follow these guidelines. Breakfast service will take place between 7.15 and 7.45. You will enter the school with mask on, under the Brother Ted Spirit Bridge. Tape lines will be provided near the snack bar to encourage social distancing. Only two students will be allowed per table. There will be no wandering between tables. There will be no toasters or microwaves in the cafeteria. Once you have finished eating, you must put a face covering back on. Students will be expected to clean their respective tables. Students will then be released to their homeroom and first period class at 7.45. At lunch, many of the same rules from breakfast will apply. The only additions will be, students buying lunch will be called up by table. 
Students will be released to their next class at the end of the period. There will be no leaving early to get to a locker or next class or anywhere. This year you're going to experience either learning in person or learning remotely. For many of you, you'll experience both. For all of you, you'll experience a class being taught to in-person students and remote ones. Patience with this process will be necessary. This is a new experience for all of us and it will not always be seamless. Any way that you can help you or your classmates or your teacher will be greatly appreciated. This might come in the form of technical support or providing your classmates with class resources. Your teachers are gonna be working that much harder this year to deliver clear audio and video to remote students. So being quiet and attentive in class, while always important, is a very high priority this year. Our goal is to get better every day, so don't let a technical mishap affect your mindset and don't let it negatively affect your learning process. In football, you don't allow a broken play to affect the next one. In baseball, a pitcher has to come back and throw strikes after walking a batter. In basketball, you play defense after a turnover. In soccer, if you get beat, you don't hang your head, you get back down the field and you make a play. In band, you don't let one bad note affect the whole song. And in theater, you don't let a missed line stop the play. The show must go on. As a community, as men of Benedictine, we will get through this whether it be in person or remotely. You are part of 90 years of history that is part of 1,500 years of Benedictine tradition. It has not always been an easy road. We have faced challenges before and we will get through this one together. Thank you for your cooperation and we look forward to seeing you this year.